On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to load a milling cutter into our milling machine harbour. To load the milling cutter into the machine, we use an R8 collet. The R8 collet itself has a male cone, a ground internal diameter, and at the rear of the collet, there's a screw thread that is used with the drawbar on the machine to pull the collet in place and lock the cutter. The cutter that I'm using is a 20 mil diameter cutter. With the back of the cutter is a ground 16 mil diameter. So I'm using a 16 mil collet, which slides in place, which is a nice, easy fit. So you must select the correct collet for the correct shanked cutter that you are going to use. To load the collet into position, the collets have a keyway milled in the side of the collet. This has to be in line with a drive dog, which is on the inside lip of your spindle nose. If the keyway is not in line, then it won't go all the way home. So if you bring your collet and find the drive dog, it should slide up and go all the way home. If you support your collet and your cutter, and then move to the top of your machine, you'll see the drawbar. We can then turn the drawbar so the two threads engage and pulls the collet up into the spindle nose. If you just do it finger tight, it should then be enough to support your cutter and your collet. Then take your drawbar spanner, put on your spindle lock, which locks your spindle in place just by putting pressure on the lever and then tightening the drawbar. Now your cutter is ready to use. After you've gone through your machining processes, to reverse that and take your cutter out, it's just a case of putting back on your spindle lock, taking your drawbar spanner, undoing the drawbar, releasing it three or four turns, but what you might find is your cutter and your R8 collet still stay in place because you have a cone on the inside of your spindle nose which just bites the collet with the pressure that you put on. So to release that, you take just a grip of the cutter and with your hide mallet just get a little tap on the top of your drawbar and your cutter should come out and then support your collet Unscrew your drawbar all the way and your collet then comes out ready to be put back. And that's the demonstration how to load and unload a milling cutter. On this demonstration I'm going to show you how we load a component into a milling vise. Firstly you need to check that the component to your battery machine no burrs or bruises standing proud of the faces that you're going to secure onto. If so, take a file and remove all burrs. Once you're happy that your component is nice and clean and flat, you can move to the vise itself. The component will sit on parallel strips, which are hardened and ground strips with the diameter the same across the two flats and the component sits on both of these parallels. One of the parallels goes to the fixture at the back of the vise, one of the parallels moves to the front of the vise. We check that the vise has no swarf or debris in it so everything's sitting flat, clean and true. We take our component, we can sit that on the two parallels, Press down on the top of the components on the parallels and we can tighten the vise with the vise spanner. We can then take our mallet with our bronze end and tighten the vise spanner itself. Three or four taps. With the other end of the mallet, the hide end, we can then tap the top of our component until the parallels stop moving and then you know that your component is down in place. Once the parallels are fixed and secure, you know then that your component is down and fixed flat. 
Remove your tool pump uh, spanner and it's now ready to be machined. On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we clock up the back fixed jaw of a machine vise true to the x-axis of our milling machine. Firstly, we load the vise onto the machine and by eyesight, getting the back jaw true to the keyways that are running longitudinal along the milling machine itself. We put in two locking screws, which holds the vise down to the machine bed. We can slightly tighten one and leave the other loose. The one that we have tightened, we're either going to use that as a pivot point to pivot around to bring the back fixture true. To get the vice true, we use what's called a DTI, a dial test indicator. This is a clock on the front and a needle which moves when there's movement on the finger of the clock itself. Each individual increment on the dial is 0 0.02 of a millimeter. To hold this in the machine, we have a Jacob's chuck in the spindle. We can load it just by placing the DTI in the Jacob's chuck and with the Jacob's chuck key locking it in place. We then now have to bring our fixed jaw up to our finger so there's movement on the dial. So by using the handles of the machine, we have now got pressure on the finger and it's now showing on the dial of the detail itself. We can set that to a known fixed position, zero or, or whichever, and then in our x-axis, wind the clock across the jaw to see what error is in the jaw itself. So I'm winding across the jaw itself and seeing if the needle moves. So I've wound the clock across to the side which has the loose fixing on the vice itself and I can read out how much error there is involved. I can take my hide mallet and by using our fixed pivot point I can tap one side or the other side of the mallet to bring our dial back true. A clockwise movement of the dial means it's going plus. An anti-clockwise movement of the dial means it's going minus. So if I tap our vice back to our start position, wind the clock back to the far side of the jaw, with our start point, Reset the dial to a known point and go through the same process again to see if the needle on the DTI moves. If it stays in a fixed point, then we know that our fixed jaw is now true to the axis of our machine bed. If it's still a little out, we can just do minor adjustments to bring it true. We can then, with our spanner, lock the two side screws down, doing half turns at a time. And then, then doing a final check by running all the way across the jaw itself. If the needle is in the same dating position, you know then that your jaw is true. And that's how you clock 
a vice jaw with a DTI to the axis of your machine. On this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we find a datum edge of a component that we're about to machine in relation to the axis of our machine itself. To do this, we use what's called an indexing bar. This is just a ground hardened piece of silver steel of a known diameter, this being 10 millimeter. And with this, we use a piece of 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge. To hold the indexing bar, we hold it in a Jacob's chuck and we go through the same process with the R8 collet as what we do by loading and unloading a milling cutter. With the slot at the front, we can put the R8 cutter in place, find the drive dog and press it all the way home. By supporting the Jacob's chuck then we can go to the top of the machine and secure the drawbar. just finger tight. We can then take our drawbar spanner, press the spindle lock, tighten the drawbar. Taking our indexing bar, we can then put that inside the Jacob's chuck, holding on all three jaws. We can lock that then in place using our Jacob's chuck key locking it in place and then what we need to do now is move our indexing bar to a position close to our datum face. We can drop the indexing bar down to a level and then using the x-axis of the bed wind the bed across until we trap our 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge between the indexing bar and the component. We now know that the centre of our machine is half the diameter of our indexing bar away from our component datum edge being 5 millimetres on a 10 millimetre bar. We can then set our digital readout to zero and then we can work from this digital readout for more relative positions that we're about to machine. We take the indexing bar away, we move our feeler gauge and that's by using an indexing bar find the datum point of our component.